Hi, I'm Paul Cranage, and today I'm interviewing our federal member for Jellybrand and politician Tim Watts. Tim has been a member of the Australian Parliament since 2013, and he joins us now from Canberra. This is just like when I'm getting interviewed on the, the TV news these days. <laughs> so my first question today is, how would you best describe your job to people who don't know? Yeah, it's a really good question that, Paul. And oftentimes you'll hear politicians say that their job is about, you know, the constitution or the parliament or things like that. Um, but the way I look at my job is that my job is about power and how we use power in our society, in our community. Um, so how we make decisions about what to do as a group, um, that's my job. I'm there to, in the parliament to represent our community um, when parliament is trying to make a decision about what we should do as a group, uh, as a country. Okay, that's pretty cool. So what is your favourite part of your job? <laughs> Honestly, my favourite part of the job is speaking to school groups. Um, I'm really passionate about our democracy and uh, the role that the members of parliament can play in representing our communities. And I really love sharing that passion with school groups. Um, I often think that the questions I get from, from kids in school groups um, are a lot better than the questions I get from journalists up here um, because they're questions that really cut to the important issues, um, the things that people really care about. Um, they're not kind of cynical questions or loaded questions or political questions, just genuine questions about things that really matter to people. So I, I really enjoy talking with young, young people in my job. Cool. Um, on a more serious note, so how are we looking as a state um, in managing COVID-19? Yeah, so as we're speaking now in Victoria, um, the state government, the, the Daniel Andrews government has slowly been lifting some restrictions. So we are moving into a new phase of the disease. Um, I've got two primary school kids myself. Um, so we've been following the, the announcements about uh, schools slowly going back to, to uh, learning in the school um, very closely. Um, but it's important that we take a step back from these specific announcements and just appreciate that where we are as a state is, is in a very lucky position. Um, you know, when you look at what's happened in countries like the United States, um, like Iran, like Italy, um, like France, um, you know, many thousands of people have died. Um, it's, it's been a, a great tragedy. It's the great tragedy of, of my lifetime. Um, so we're very lucky in that respect that, um, Governments of, of all persuasions have, have acted really quickly um, and we've got it right on the health response. Um, the, the problem that we now face is that there's gonna be a very difficult challenge for getting our economy and our society um, working again in, in the way that it was, um, more like in the way that it was before this virus. Okay, and what is your opinion on actually opening back up? Well, I, I think that we should be taking advice of the experts. So I'm, I'm listening really carefully to the medical experts who are advising the government about what we can do safely um, to ensure that the disease doesn't get control in the community. Um, we've seen in Melbourne's West, um, just in the last fortnight, how slippery uh, COVID-19 is. You know, it started with, with one case um, in the meatworks on Geelong Road, um, and now we have more than 80 cases um, flowing just from that one uh, infection. So we've got to be careful. Um, so my, my approach is that I listen to the medical experts and go from there. There's a very serious um, economic challenge that comes from this, this pandemic as well, but that, it, that economic challenge flows from the health challenge. So we've got to resolve the health challenge before we'll be able to deal with the economic challenge. Okay. Um, also, so what is the thing that you've missed um, the most during lockdown? Oh, <laughs> I was really looking forward to going to the footy. <laughs> I, I reckon the, the dogs are a top four chance this year. Um, and I, I, I had a promise uh, talking to uh, Peter Gordon about this. He thought they were a good chance for top four as well. Um, I really love going to the footy with my kids. That's kind of the, the thing that gives me the most just joy in life. Um, so watching that first round of footy with no, nobody in the crowds, I, it just didn't feel right to me. Um, so that's the thing that I'm, I'm most uh, looking forward to, being able to get back uh, when we get on the other side of this virus. 
Um, how is um Parliament running like at the moment with all COVID nineteen surrounding it? Yeah, it's very different. Um, but the big the biggest difference for me is that I I usually fly to to Parliament, so I live in Footscray, so it's a, a short drive up the Tulla to Melbourne Airport, and then forty five minutes on the plane to Canberra, and then I'm into my house in Kingston. Um, but since COVID-19 has started, um, I've had to drive to Canberra. So it's about a seven and a half hour drive. And now I've got a direct experience of all those school groups who have uh, gotten on the bus and, and driven up to visit me in Parliament House. So I know what that's like now. Um, but Parliament House is a really sensitive spot. Usually we'd have thousands of people working in this building and many thousands of those come from all over the country. So at the best of times, it's a bit of a, a germ factory. You know, you get lots of different bugs coming from all around the place and everyone's working in close quarters. So we've had to really change the way that the parliament operates internally. So non-essential staff are, are not here. So I don't have any staff with me. I'm here up on my own for, this, for these sittings. Um, a lot of the uh, people that support our work in the parliament um, are, are being kept away for their safety as well. Um, we have uh, hand sanitizer everywhere. All of our seats in the chamber have changed. So now that we're one and a half meters apart, um, and that means that only about half of us can be at the chamber at any one time. Um, so it's been a really big change um, to the way we do our job up here, but um, I don't think there's been any more important time for the parliament to being a do, doing its job. We've got a big, national crisis that's going on at the moment, both health and economic. And I, I feel it's really important for parliamentarians to be here, uh, representing their community and uh, shaping the government's response. Okay. Um, and what do you think it will be like after COVID-19 has um, all cleared up? Like, how do you think it will be different? This is like the really big discussion of our times, I think. Um, there are some people who talk about wanting um, there to be a snapback, you know, so that after we get through the virus, things to go back the way that they were. Um, that's not really the way that I look at it. You know, I think that the um, the scale of the, the the interruption and the scale of the disruption caused by COVID-19 um, means that we have an opportunity to do things differently now. Um, so after the crisis, um, I hope that we look differently about the role of essential workers in our community. Um, look at how important nurses and uh, uh, people delivering the services that we, we rely on, uh, people working in, in retail sector, people working in aged care, disability care, all of these people that we now um, are seeing you know, really directly how important they are. I hope that after COVID-19, um, we recognise that and, and things like how well they're paid and how well they're treated in those jobs. Okay. Um what for you has been the best and worst part of lockdown? Um, <laughs> it's a bit two sides of the same coin, I'd say. Um, the best part for me is that usually my job means that I'm traveling a lot. Um, so I'll be in Canberra 20 weeks a year for parliament. Um, and then I have to travel around the rest of the country um, doing different things about my portfolio responsibilities. So. Usually I'm away from home about half the time and that makes me really sad because, you know, I've got two primary school age kids and I've got a wife that I love and being away from them is really hard on me. So uh, being forced to be at home um, has been really nice to, about the, the amount of time that I can spend with them. Um, the worst part of this is, you know, as a member of parliament, you're really connected with the community that you represent. Um, so you sort of feel what the community is feeling very directly because um, you're talking with people all the time. You feel invested in what's happening um, around you. And there's just a, so much pain in the community at the moment. You know, so many people have lost their jobs, so many businesses that people have put their life savings and their, their, their life's passion into um, have been lost. And that, that, that seeing that suffering um, and we can help some people, um, but not being able to help everyone, um, that's, been, that's been the worst part for me. It's, it's a very, very sad time. Um, so this is our final question. Is there anything that you'd like to share with Newport Gardens, our school, 
just a kind of like a heads up note or anything? <laughs> well, the only heads up note that I'd say is that the other thing that we uh, um, have really learned during this pandemic is just how amazing and brilliant and important our teachers are. So I'd say to everyone at Newport Gardens, um, your teachers have, have been doing it tough um, throughout this pandemic. They've had to change the way that they do their jobs. They've had to work out how to do distance learning. They've had to um, support kids who, who have to go to school because their parents have to be at work. Um, and they've had to deal with a lot of anxiety, both in their own life and with the people they teach. So the one thing that I'd want uh, people at Newport Guards to take away is a real appreciation um, for the incredible job that our teachers do uh, for us every day um, and importantly throughout this pandemic. Thank you for your valuable time, Tim. That's all the time that we have with you now. It's been a pleasure to have you here. So thank you all again and bye. Thanks for the My trip. pleasure, Paul. Great questions. Thanks, Thanks again to Tim Watts for giving us some time out of his busy schedule. Back to you, Lola.